بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين Respected viewers, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the glorious household of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam no doubt today stand as exemplary and are role models for human beings to indeed follow and to seek as inspiration and to look for as far as guidance and direction is concerned. In many areas and dimensions of our lives, we need advice, we need recommendation, we are in dire requirement of motivation in order to seek how others have lived and especially those who have dedicated themselves in the path of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have given 100% or more actually in this particular noble objective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to follow the Ahl al-Bayt and to display and exhibit compassion and loyalty towards them. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى I do not seek anything in return from you except to show love and loyalty towards my family. The Holy Quran in chapter 42 verse 23 clearly exhibits and displays the need for us to look towards the Ahl al-Bayt for inspiration. And one of those areas of prime importance is morality, is the system of ethics, behavior, conduct. Today, we find that in many instances, we are in great need to understand what are the standards to work towards as far as our conduct and our behavior is concerned in society. Ilm al-Akhlaq, the study of ethics and the moral system is indeed a crucial uh, set of teachings in the religion of Islam. There are more verses in the Holy Quran that detail akhlaq, morality, than there are when it comes to ahkam, laws, highlighting its crucial significance and its importance that it plays in the life of the human being and generally for the well-being and the strength of the society and the community. When we look at the Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, the inspiration is such that the Holy Prophet of Islam, Rasul al-Azam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I have been sent to perfect the morality of human beings. This innama in Arabic is an exclusive tool. Li'utammima is emphasis. And he has been sent to complete and perfect, raising the bar and the standard as far as morality and ethics and conduct is concerned. And the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as one after the other, this ship of salvation, the 14 glorious ma'sumin, peace and blessings be upon them, starting of course with the Holy Prophet and the other 13 ma'sumin, are indeed the best role models in this regard. The Lady of Light, Sayyida Fatima, as well as the 12 Imams, exist today as the best examples of morality and role models to indeed imitate and to follow. And we understand therefore why the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that you and I should be loving the Ahl al-Bayt because that love will bring us closer to them and this proximity will enable us to learn from them, to follow in their footsteps, to uh, base our lives around them. Once Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, was walking. The narrations tell us that behind him was Salman al-Muhammadi, radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi. 
this noble companion of the Holy Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he was walking behind the Imam, he was um, walking and following his footsteps. And the Imam turned and found that Salman was on the footsteps of the Imam and not taking his own footsteps. When he asked him why, Salman said, because I want to follow you even by placing my feet where you walked. To that extent, there is that uh, incredible association and uh, encouragement to be with the Ahlul Bayt. Peace and blessings be upon them. Indeed, when we discuss morality and when we think about akhlaq, the first thing that emerges in this study or this analysis, seeking the akhlaq of the Ahl al-Bayt, looking at the morality of the glorious household, is the idea surrounding intention and the purpose of action of the human being. In our day-to-day -day lives, we may conduct many affairs. We may speak to people. We may um, organize something. We may purchase. We may interact. The concept here is with regards to why we do what we do. And ultimately, within the religion of Islam, there is a foundation for every action. And that is ikhlas, sincerity. It is the cornerstone to make sure that the action itself is not feeble, but rather quite strong and remains a uh, factor that enables the human being to excel and to achieve righteousness and virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in numerous occasions informs us of the importance of sincerity, the correct uh, intention, for the deed, for the action. It's the real spirit of the action itself, as opposed to when you see other denominations or perhaps other beliefs, that they may not necessarily focus much upon it. If the action itself is good, as long as that is viewed as a positive step, then it is considered as righteous. Whereas the religion of Islam says, no, the beginning of the action is the intention which exists in the heart. Why am I doing something? The action itself needs to be also authentically good, uh, virtuous, and of course the result or the aftermath that the human being uh, in terms of how they speak about what they did is also deemed to be fairly important. And whether they boast, whether they practice ostentation, Riya showing off is another factor for the acceptance of the deed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In chapter 39 verse 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهِ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينِ The command is that I should worship Allah sincerely, 100% everything should be with Him and for Him. And the practice or the concept of sincerity, ikhlas, is one that has been demonstrated in the conduct and in the life of the Ahl al-Bayt on numerous occasions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala details in Surah Al-Insan the famous story of the holy Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidatul Nisa, Fatima al-Zahra, Imam al-Hasan, al Hussein. peace and blessings be upon them all. When the holy Imams, al-Hasan al Hussein, fell ill and the uh, Holy Imam as well as Sayyidah Fatima made a vow that they shall fast for three days if they became better. When they did become better, they observed this, of course. And indeed, after the first day had gone and it's, uh, um, they are about to break their fast, we are told that the door knocks and a poor person, a miskeen, comes and seeks help. They all lift, for example, the food that they had, which is some loaf of bread, and they present it to their destitute, to the poor man. They fast the second day just by breaking their fast with water. The second day, an orphan also comes and they repeat the same thing. They give the orphan all that they have in terms of their food. Likewise, 
the similar incident or similar occurrence is viewed on the th on the third day. So the second and the third, as well as the first, all had a similar trend. And on the third day, somebody who was captive and just released, in other words, not one who has much food, perhaps uh, lacking any support, was given the entire food of the Ahl al-Bayt by all of them. And on the fourth day, when the Prophet of Islam visited them, he saw that they were quite weak. Um, or whenever he visited them after that, even at night, uh, on the third or on the fourth day, he saw that they were visibly weakened because for three days they had not eaten anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these holy verses in Surah Al-Insan. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا we, they, The Qur'an says they gave their food due to the love of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to the poor person, to the orphan and to the captive. They then said, according to the Qur'an, we are giving you the food because of God, because of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not expecting from you any remuneration or reward, neither are we looking for thankfulness or gratitude from you. And indeed, the story which has been fairly popular and very much known by many people around the world, especially the Muslim community, highlights the power and the significance of purity of intention, purity of thought, the purity that's associated with the niyyah, and that it was not adulterated, it was not tainted, it was not uh, done for the sake of others, but uh, rather entirely for the sake of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the key feature of this story is that they themselves, the Ahl al-Bayt, have said, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ we are giving you this food for the sake of Allah. And a point to reflect, unfortunately, some people have translated the first part, ala hubbihi. They give the food due to his love or due to the love. It is not because of the love of the food, as some have translated, that they are giving the food even though they love the food. No. Ala hubbihi he refers to the love of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the love of the Almighty Jalla wa ala. And it is emphasized on the next verse. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ That we are giving you this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Highlighting how the Ahlul Bayt want us to learn the uh, importance of inculcating and developing the uh, need to do things for the sake of God and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The Almighty says, Ala lillahi dinul khalis. To Allah belongs the religion that's pure. Imagine that when we buy a product, we want this product to be 100%, for example, a particular brand. We want it to, uh, you know, not be mixed with other brands. If we're looking for a well-known brand of some clothing or um, technology, computers or phone, then we expect it to be from the company that we purchase it from or that which has been produced. And if it is a fake model where other companies have taken part or certain parts have been taken from this and that, we don't normally want it. And that's why, uh, you know, we want the original product. The Quran tells us, of course, that that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us. Uh, work and deeds which are not adulterated, but rather sincere and pure. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam informs Abu Dhar, لِيَكُنْ لَكَ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ نِيَّةً صَالِحًا Let there be for you, for every deed that you do, righteous intention, good niyyah. حَتَّى فِي النَّوْمِ وَالْأَكْلِ Even when it comes to sleep as well as eating. So on, even when it comes to normal day-to-day -day life, how people conduct themselves and what they do to engage in a day-to-day -day activity, even that should be uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful is this 
narration from our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad in As-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ On the day of judgment, نَظَرَ رُضْوَانْ خَازِنُ الْجَنَّةِ The Rudwan who is the uh, keeper or the angel in charge of paradise, looks at a few people, إِلَى قَوْمٍ لَمْ يَمُرُّوا بِهِ Some people who are in paradise, but he has not seen that they have walked past him. In other words, he, has, he is quite surprised that they are in paradise already. فَيَقُولْ مَنْ أَنْتُمْ أَيْنَ دَخَلْتُمْ How did you get into paradise? Who are you? They will respond. They will say, إِيَّاكَ anna. Don't worry about us. فَإِنَّا قَوْمًا عَبَدْنَا اللَّهَ سِرَّا فَأَدْخَلَنَا اللَّهُ سِرَّا that we are people who worshipped Allah in secret and He entered us into paradise in secret. In Al-Bihar, this narration is from Imam al-Sadiq That this worship of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not for showing off, that is not for seeking the approval of others, that is not for somehow uh, having a tap on the back, is one that is looked for. Hence the prayers at the night, Salatul Layl, is highly recommended because often there are no people to kind of congratulate the individual. There are no uh, people around the human being. They're normally at home or in a place of worship and not many rise at night to perform this great act of uh, obedience, devotion, and uh, commitment to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and his holy progeny states that al-a'malu ma nawa. And there are, everything is just according to uh, the intention, and that's the basis of the actions. But of course, ostentation, riya, showing off, or seeking the approval of others, are you doing things for the sake of others and not for the sake of Allah, has many, many repercussions. It is certainly one that could lead to sins. It is known as a shirkul azgar, minor polytheism. The Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings be upon him on, uh, and his family says, in al murai yunada yawm al qiyamah that the person who shows off is uh, is uh, called on the day of judgment ya fajr ya ghadir ya murai o oh, the one who is showing off o oh, the one who is a transgressor dhalla amaluk wa batala ajruk that your work is nullified your deed is not worth anything and you have strayed from the right path. اذهب فخذ أجرك من كنت تعمل له. Go and seek your reward from the one who you sought to help. You sought, sorry, you sought to uh, seek approval of. Now, Amir al muminin peace and blessings be upon him, and his holy progeny uh, and the Ahl al Bayt, uh, says that you know gives us barometers as to how we should be seeking and improving ourselves in terms of our sincerity to uh, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, لِلْمُرَائِي أَرْبَعُ alamat That the showing the person shows off has four signs. Number one, يَكْسَلُ إِذَا كَانَ وَحْدَهِ يَكْسَلُ إِذَا كَانَ وَحْدَهِ means that they are by themselves, they're very lazy in terms of ibadah, in terms of good deeds. يَنْشَطُ إِذَا كَانَ فِي النَّاسِ when they are with people, they sometimes get a bit more energy. Not energy that sometimes one motivates the other, but more so for the sake of pleasing others. So that we do it so that others say, well done. That's very, very good. Third, وَيَزِيدُ فِي الْعَمَلِ إِذَا أُثْنِيَ عَلَيْهِ If somebody says to them, well done, you're doing well, they do more because... They somehow want that particular praise to continue. If somebody doesn't thank them, they say, oh, why, why am I doing it? So they start reducing the good deeds or good work because they say people are not appreciating. People are not uh, saying, they're not seeing the worth of my deeds. They, of course, uh, fail to recognize that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is uh, the, the ultimate uh, uh, 
a re rewarder of the actions. In other words, it doesn't matter if people are giving the thanks or not. It doesn't matter if the people are saying, well, you know, uh, well done or not. If we are doing it for Allah, then we should continue because nothing is missed by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that note, if somebody gets praise, is that acceptable or not? Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, yes, it's acceptable provided that we did not do the deeds and the work so that we get the praise. And, and without that praise, we won't do it. So there's no problem in somebody coming and congratulating someone, for example, uh, when they have done uh, uh, a positive step in their lives, but it is of the utmost importance that it's not uh, fulfilled or it's not done for that purpose. Indeed, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us strengthen ikhlas, sincerity in our hearts, in our actions, to learn from the glorious Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. Every step, every speech, every action of theirs was done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran praises them and commands us to follow them so that indeed we also attain success and victory in this world and the Akhirah. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallillahum ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Thank <laughs> you.